What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name's Michael Roman, AKA All Fires, and as promised, like we reported earlier at the channel, the first teaser trailer for Craven was shown tonight with exclusive footage at CinemaCon. Now, while people were not able to record it, they were live tweeting from the event, which is interesting because Sony told people to turn off their devices. Either way, we got some major updates and I don't think anybody saw this coming. It's rated R and apparently extremely bloody and gory. We're gonna cover all the details that came out after CinemaCon's first look footage of Kraven the Hunter and the bombshell reveal that it's actually rated R, including one other Spider-Man villain that was shown during this first teaser. But quick reminder, we do daily Marvel content at the channel. That's all we do, everything from official Easter egg breakdowns, trailers and reviews to the occasional industry insider report and everything in between. So if that sort of thing's for you, hit the subscribe button Leave a comment down below that automatically enters you to win our ongoing PS5 giveaway. The next one is literally just over a week away to coincide with Guardians of the Galaxy release. Again, all you got to do, be a sub, leave a comment on the video, stick around to the end of the video. We get into all the giveaway stuff again there. Okay, so first up, before they showed the teaser, Sony confirmed that this will be their very first rated R Marvel movie. And following in the footsteps of movies like Logan and Deadpool, the teaser trailer they showed was apparently extremely violent and bloody. And this, according to multiple sources, Brandon Davis over at comicbook.com, a buddy of mine tweeted out that it was quote, gritty and bloody with a few F-bombs. Aaron Taylor Johnson actually bites a dude's face off and spits it out towards the camera. According to The Hollywood Reporter, this is during a scene where six poachers are approaching and Craven is able to dispatch and kill them again in a bloody mess rather easily. Past that, Aaron Taylor Johnson was happy to exclaim on stage that it definitely was rated effing R and he holds up in the classic costume and even runs on all fours. He's out to be quote unquote nothing like his dad and it looks vicious. Other reports say that the Rhino showed up in the teaser trailer and appears to be the villain of the film. He injects himself with a serum at the end of the trailer. You see him transform into the Rhino. And while immediately people pointed out that we haven't seen him live and on screen since Andrew Garfield's Amazing Spider-Man movies, I don't think this actually connects him to the Amazing Spider-Man films. Rather, this is a different version of what the Rhino could be in the multiverse. Several sources tweeting out that it looks like he's the villain. And to be fair, if you don't have a Spider-Man in the movie for Kraven to fight, might as well fight a different villain of the Spider-Man's rogue gallery and one that is, well, a rhinoceros. This also shouldn't come as quite a shocker because this is the exact same playbook that they followed during the Venom film when they faced off Venom against Carnage. It's just a different Spider-Man villain. Ultimately, you're going to end up with a bunch of anti-heroes, but the fact that they're putting these villains together somewhat in proximity is obviously leading to something, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But first, we have to talk about this R rating because it makes the proposition and the future of the Spider-adjacent Sonyverse extremely exciting now that they're willing to take this chance. There were several articles over the last three or four years quoting people like Kevin Feige, the top brass over at Sony, that it was extremely and explicitly important to keep movies like Venom 1 and 2 PG-13 for the ultimate plans of crossing him over with Tom Holland's Peter Parker. That's why I've always said Sony's ultimate plan, no matter how many live action Peter Parkers we may see in the distant future at Sony, is to get Tom Hardy's billion dollar Venom franchise crossed over with Tom Holland's billion dollar Spider-Man franchise. However, that needs to happen. The fact now that they're willing to make Kraven the Hunter rated R means at least there's an opportunity that Venom could be rated R, something it should have been from the beginning, and that means maybe a departure from the course that while we need to keep them PG-13 in case they cross over with our highly lucrative Spider-Man, we want to keep them as friendly as possible. The majority of the demographic of people who still watch Marvel movies are well over the age to watch rated R movies, and while there are several projects that are specifically aimed at teens and younger for Marvel, Venom, Deadpool, Wolverine, Blade, and in this case, now, Craven the Hunter just don't need to be. If Sony's going to make these movies at all, I'm glad that they recognize this. And it's kind of crazy to me that Sony, which has generally been in the past, historically the house of leaks, was able to keep a wraps on this being rated R. Not once was this ever mentioned at in any of the industry insider reporting, maybe due to a lack of interest and maybe that's fair, but in the shadow of what just happened with Morbius actually becoming a meme and nothing more in the zeitgeist, it looks as though Sony has pulled all stops and said, look, let's actually make this 
with some teeth, pun totally intended, now we're getting a rated R version of the character. Now the reason I said this is extremely exciting and seems to make a departure of the course from them wanting to keep anything that crosses over with Spider-Man PG-13 is because that is the ultimate plan. Now you have the Vulture teamed up with Morbius, you'll have Kraven fighting the Rhino. If you add in Venom and then even one other villain, you'd actually have a Sinister Six. How they cross back over to the 616 while we're in the middle of a multiverse saga where there are incursions happening more and more often in the MCU. We're about to see one in the upcoming Marvel. So there surely is going to be a multiversal on-ramp for those characters to cross back over. And look, the last time we did one of these videos, you guys mentioned that you'd love to see Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man continue in perhaps the continuation of his trilogy, The Amazing Spider-Man, and maybe use that Peter Parker as the one that would cross over with the Sinister Six, but literally just rewind the video for two minutes. It's Tom Holland's Peter Parker that's the anchor of the billion dollar MCU franchise. It's Tom Holland's Peter Parker that they ultimately want. I am all for Andrew Garfield returning. I want to see him and Toby back in Secret Wars. I hope Marvel Studios and Sony uh, continue to choose to do these sort of things for the rest of the multiverse saga. Tobey Maguire is already on record as saying, of course, he'd come back. It would be fun. I'm sure Andrew would as well. But just the guys who are worried about the bottom lines, the suits, the lawyers, the executive producers cutting the checks, they see Tom Holland's Peter Parker as the most recent and most lucrative. That's why at least the initial plans were for that Peter Parker to cash in on all of these rogue gallery films. And I would be shocked if Sony's still making these solo rogue gallery villain movies with no real ambition of crossing them over. I know there's going to be at least some people who point to the rated R rating on Craven, perhaps being that, them just throwing it out and saying, hey, we don't really know what the future of this is, but it's sort of the opposite. With their expanded universe now headed towards Amazon, they have live action for both Silk and Spider-Man Noir, with Madam Web establishing a more extended universe, and now with Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, their animated film referencing the events of what happened in the MCU, it's more clear now than ever that they actually have a plan somewhere that they want to go with this, and following with that same logic, there's just too many Spider-Man villains all in one place to not eventually see a Peter Parker. Uh, fingers crossed they sort of saw what happened with Spider-Man No Way Home and they go with Andrew Garfield, but it's hard for me to believe that that's what's going to happen. It's also hard for me to believe that Andrew Garfield would be anywhere near under some sort of contract to do this and it wouldn't have been all over Industry Insider's radar because, well, again, Sony, historically the house of leaks. Guys, let me know all your thoughts down below. How do you feel about a rated R Craven the Hunter? I know in the announcement video from earlier today, I asked if you guys were hype. A lot of you said no. Does it change anything now that we know it's rated R? I am all ears quickly. Let's get into the giveaway stuff before I let you go. All right, we are still giving away a PlayStation 5. The next one is literally a week away uh, for Guardians of the Galaxy next Thursday. So if you want to be entered to win, it's super simple. All you got to do, hit the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. That automatically enters you to win all our giveaways. Because it's truly random, the more videos you comment on, the better chance you have of winning. All winners will always be announced during the live segment at the end of the video, the same segment we're doing here, with my voice and the comments shown on screen. The best way to keep up with the content has always been to hit the notification bell with all notifications turned on. And as always, if you like today's video, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit the like button. My name is Michael Roman. You can find me in a couple of places, Instagram and Twitter. Twitter at I Am Fires. You can also find me on Spotify, YouTube, Amazon, Apple, iTunes with original music under the name All Fires. Guys, I actually put out an album last week and it debuted peaking at number 23 in the top 40 alternative records in the country, mostly due to y'all support. If you haven't streamed it already, it's on all platforms. You can find it everywhere. Make an entrance EP by All Fires. Thank you guys so much for the support. It has meant the world to me over the last week or so. And again, if you haven't heard my music yet and you're just morbidly curious, even if it's not for you, just clicking on it sends it out into the algorithm uh, to find people who do want to hear it. I uh, love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.